Part 2. The Location and Facility Pages Let's look at the Location and Facility Pages in RETScreen. The Location page has three elements. At the top, there is information about where my project is located. Below that, there are tables of climate data for that location. And at the bottom, there is a graph showing how climate data vary over the course of the year. The very top line gives the name of my climate data location as well as the name of the place where my project is located. The former comes from the climate database. It is in a blue cell because RETScreen uses blue for all inputs that come from databases. The facility location name is in gray because RETScreen uses this color for all text that is only for informational purposes. I can enter whatever I want here without changing RETScreen's calculations. If you want more information on the meaning of different cell colors in RETScreen, click on the Color Coding menu option. Note that Climate Location and Facility Location text may be overwritten by RETScreen if I adjust the location of my project, as I will do shortly. On the map at the top of the page, I see an image giving the location of my project, indicated by a thumbtack with a building on it, and the location from which climate data is taken, shown by a thumbtack with a globe on it. I can adjust the position of these thumbtacks even after launching the project with the Virtual Energy Analyzer. I initiate this by clicking on the Select Climate Data Location on the menu or the globe icon beside the climate data location. Assuming I have an internet connection, a map with the two thumbtacks appears. The map also shows all the nearby locations where climate data is available. Sites in red have ground station measurements. Sites in blue have measurements exclusively derived from satellite instruments. I can zoom and move my project thumbtack. As I do so, RETScreen repositions the climate data thumbtack to the nearest site for climate data. The distance between the project thumbtack and the climate data sites is displayed in the table at right. I'm not obliged to use the climate data location chosen by RETScreen. If I prefer, I can manually drag the climate data location thumbtack to a different red or blue dot. Alternatively, I can double click on the station I want in the list at right. If I don't have an internet connection, I can still pick my climate data location. At the top left, I choose either search or data. If I select search, I can search by name. In the left hand pane, RETScreen displays the names of any climate data locations having similar names. For example, if I entered Vancouver, RETScreen finds four locations with somewhat similar names. When I pick one of these, RETScreen shows all the climate data locations near this in the pane on the right. I can select from among these. When I change the location here, the map is also updated should my internet connection return. If I select Data instead of Search, I can access these same climate data locations using drop-down lists. This allows me to see the entire list of options for a given country, province, or state, as well as the climate data for the chosen location. For example, I'll set the country to Germany and return to Munich. Returning to the map, I see that I am back in Munich, but the project location thumbtack has been set to the climate data location. Once I've fixed that, and I'm happy with my selection, I click on the green check mark to close the map and paste my climate data into RATScreen. The updated climate data appears in the tables below the map. The top table is for parameters that do not change over the course of the year. For example, the latitude and longitude of my site remain the same year long. The bottom table is for parameters that do change. Here, monthly average values, as well as the annual average, are given for parameters like air temperature and daily solar radiation on the horizontal. I can change the units for these parameters using the drop-down lists. For example, I can display the daily solar radiation on the horizontal in megajoules per square meter per day or the atmospheric pressure in inches of mercury. The source column in the top table and the source row in the bottom table indicate where the data comes from, ground station measurements or NASA estimates from satellite instruments. I can overwrite any of the values in the blue cells with my own estimates. For example, if I measure the relative humidity at my site and found that the January average was 80%, I could change this value. Observe that when I do this, the source value for relative humidity changes to user-defined. My user-defined values are applied only to this analysis, 
I cannot modify the values RatScreen keeps in the database itself. There is a measured at row beneath the bottom table. The value for the wind speed indicates the height above the ground at which the wind speed data is measured. For the earth temperature, the value of zero indicates that this is a measurement of the surface temperature. If I enter my own data for these columns, I should specify the height or depth at which my measurements were taken. At the bottom of the page is a graph showing the monthly average values of one or two climate variables. By default, the daily solar radiation and the air temperature are shown. I can pick other variables and by unclicking the checkbox, choose to look at only one variable. Having explored the location page, I'll move on to the facility page. The top part of this page communicates what type of project is being analyzed, its address, who did the analysis, and for whom the analysis was done. At the bottom of the page is a graph comparing the cost of producing electricity with different technologies. The facility information found at the top of the page contains a mix of yellow and gray inputs. As discussed earlier, gray inputs are for informational purposes only, so I can enter what I want for these. Typically, I'll enter text that will help me remember what the point of this analysis was should I open the file six months in the future. Yellow inputs, on the other hand, affect how RetScreen behaves. The facility type, type, and description reflect the choices I made in the Virtual Energy Analyzer. If I decided that I wanted to look at an energy efficiency project or, say, wind power instead of a PV project, I'd probably want to start a new analysis so that the Virtual Energy Analyzer could provide appropriate defaults. But technically, it is possible to reconfigure the analysis here. Rather than power plant, I'd select the type of facility where I would be doing my energy efficiency project or change photovoltaic to the power generation technology I plan to use, such as wind power. Note that the choices made here affect the appearance of the energy production cost graph at the bottom of the facility page and may affect how the energy, cost, emissions, and finance pages are configured. The description text can be modified without consequences for the rest of the feasibility analysis. Still, it appears as a yellow cell because if this project is added to a portfolio of projects, RetScreen can group projects by the description text. I'll enter Utility Scale PV so that I could group all my big PV projects together. You can learn more about this in the Portfolio Analysis with RetScreen video. I'll enter a fictitious client name in the Prepared For cell. Clicking on the Additional Information icon to the right, I can enter details about this client. I'll also enter my name in the Prepared By cell. The facility name is in a yellow cell, even though it has no bearing on the calculations for a feasibility study. As with the description text, however, it plays an important role identifying the project in a portfolio. I'll enter a fictitious name, Green Sun, here. I could also fill out the street address. If I had an image showing how the project or site might look, I could change the photo such that something more relevant appears in any reports I prepare from this analysis. I've got a photo of farmland in southern Germany that I will use. I click on Select Image from the menu and identify my image file. The energy production cost graph gives ranges for the cost of producing electricity for central grid tied projects using different technologies. The energy production cost is one form of the levelized cost of energy. It represents the cost of generation but excludes transmission, distribution, or other grid operation costs. Hovering over a bar in the graph gives the numerical values for the energy production cost. The ranges for photovoltaic projects are in dark blue. The initial costs and operating and maintenance costs used to calculate these ranges are updated by RetScreen International from time to time. If you are looking at RetScreen, your graph may appear different from mine since costs for renewable energy technologies, particularly photovoltaics, have declined recently. Some of the key assumptions used to generate this graph are displayed in a table when the menu item Benchmark Database is clicked. Below the graph is a drop-down list for configuring how RetScreen displays these cost ranges. Right now, Settings Current is selected, indicating that the cost ranges are converted to euros, the currency setting chosen for the current project in part one of this video, 
at the exchange rate that I specified. By default, these ranges are calculated in Canadian dollars, and this can be displayed by selecting Red Screen Default. If I want the energy production cost displayed in my current currency setting, Euros in this example, but wish to adjust the values for inflation, local conditions, or differences in the exchange rate, I choose User Defined. For instance, if I thought prices had inflated by a total of 5% since the last update of the Red Screen Cost database, I could put in a 5% cumulative inflation rate. Or, if I thought that the ranges were all too high by 10%, I could apply an adjustment factor of 0.9. Note that these adjustments apply to all technologies. The ranges displayed here are background information for the user. They have no impact whatsoever on the feasibility analysis that is contained in the other tabs. I can bring some information from that analysis to this graph, however, by adjusting the benchmark line, which appears as a vertical dashed green line. For example, if the price paid for photovoltaic electricity were 5 euro cents per kilowatt hour, I could set the benchmark to that value. Alternatively, once I've done my analysis, I could set the benchmark to the energy production cost that I calculate for this particular project. I'll show how this is done in part 4 of this video. But again, understand that while I can set the benchmark to reflect my feasibility analysis, the feasibility analysis is completely unaffected by the value of the benchmark. With that, I'm done with the location and facility pages. In parts 3 and 4 of this video, I'll turn to the Energy, Cost, and Emissions pages. If you are following along, you might check to make sure that those tabs appear in your analysis. Sometimes, when someone is learning to use the software, they find that they have done something to make these tabs disappear. If that is the case for you, make sure that you have Feasibility selected for the analysis type. If Benchmark or Performance is selected, then Energy, Cost, and Emissions pages disappear.